In this video, you are going to watch how we can spy on the students. And I don't mean spy on the students in a bad way. Well, maybe it is a bad way. I don't know. But we can look to see all of their calculator screens. We can either choose to show the whole entire class or we can just select one student to be the presenter. So, oops, I already have this set up. I'm just going to X that out. Just ignore me for a minute. If I go to the class tab, you will notice that three of my four students in the class that I'm currently in are logged in. Nicole either could be having a hard time and not getting logged in, or she might be absent. So I'm going to show you how to handle both scenarios. In my document tab, this is my preferred method to show the students um, my keystrokes and whatnot. So what do I mean by that? Well, over here on this keypad and side screen, um, that's the option I have selected. You can choose the handheld only. I just think it's a little too small, but if you need to do work like on the other side of the screen and you just want to show the calculator, this is a nice feature to have because it lets you have this up as well as the math off to the side. This is the keypad side screen that I had up. I like this one the best because it shows a huge screen of what is happening actually on the calculator, but it also shows larger keys. You can also say the handheld and side screen, which shows the students exactly what is going on in the calculator over here on the left-hand side, or you can have the big screen up here as well. But I'm going to select keep headed side screen, which it really doesn't matter right now, but I just wanted to add this in the video because I thought it went with the topic that we're going to talk about nicely. So let's get back to the I spy feature or the capture class feature is really what it's called. In the top menu here, in the gray menu, there's a little camera. And if you hover over it, it says take screen capture. There's two different options in this menu and both of them are, I don't know, I feel that they're a lot different. So I don't know why they're together. If you just click capture page, that takes a picture of the screen that you're on. And I use that when I'm making like worksheets or tutorials. That is not the best thing that you can use in the classroom. What the classroom feature is, is capturing the class. So let's click on capture class. And right now it's selected on individual. I rarely use this feature um, just because in the class, if I capture the whole class, we can use a presenter feature. So Let's not use the individuals for the time being, especially if you're a new user. Let's capture the class. Okay, let's suppose Nicole is just not here today and we know all of our students are logged in. I can check off this logged in only box, then click OK. And what happens is all of the screens of the students who are logged in will appear. Okay, let's go back, capture class again. And I'm going to select class, but I want to see all of my screens. Let's just pretend Nicole's having a hard time. She can't get logged in, but I still need to see her screen at some point in time. What I can do is probably help her get logged in. So if I hit OK, you can now see that all of the students are in the class. Now, you might have the question, how do we know that's Nicole? So right now, we don't have any names. But what I can do is show student names if I ever want to. I like to do this sometimes, but sometimes I just like to leave it blank because it doesn't call students out, especially those of them who aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, it calls them out enough when you put them on the board and you make them go through the whole steps in front of all the students who already have it done. Um, you can also make these a little bit larger by pushing this plus sign up here. Okay, or smaller. I can make this larger. I like to keep it on this setting, especially when I have a class of 20 something students because it lets me view all of the screens at once. So let's say, you know, Nicole, you need to get logged in. Please, can you log yourself in? And she can go through all the steps. You can talk to her or talk her through it. Maybe even have some of the other students in the class talk her through it as well. But for now, I'm going to go back and just capture the class with all of the logged in students. And notice how Nicole isn't there. Okay, so as you can see, I have three screens of students 
um, in the class. And it looks like the one student here has done everything that they were supposed to do, but the other two students were having a hard time. So what I can always do is I can click on one of those students. So let's click on this person. And I always think it's funny because what you'll see students do um, when they first, you know, try to figure out who it is, is they'll start just moving their keys up and down the screen. And I'll be like, oh yeah, it's totally you. I see you moving your keys. So talk them through it. There is so much power in having a student who is struggling present to the class because it forces them to do it in a way where, you know, maybe they just don't want to ask the question in class because they're afraid or whatever it might be. And I say this because I teach freshmen. You might handle this totally differently in your classroom. You might even want to put the student name underneath, which you can up top here. You can say student name and you'd be like, yo, Sue, get with the program. Or you could totally leave it off completely. Okay, so Sue, you need to graph something. So what she's going to do is create a new document. She never wants to save anything. So she's on the right track. Add a graph. And as she's going through this, you can either have her tell you what she's doing or just have another student who was done. Maybe the middle student who already had this task completed can walk her through it. Um, why I like this so much is because I can go around the room and look at all the students as opposed to me typing everything on my computer up at the front of the room. So let's say Sue types in x squared when she was supposed to type in x squared. I forgot what it even was. Maybe it was supposed to be x squared minus 3. She gets so nervous, she pushes enter, and she's like, oh my gosh, I did the wrong thing. This is also a great learning tool because you can just say, you know what, let's fix her mistake. So hit tab, up arrow, and type in the minus three. You can either tell her this or you can have another student tell her this. And that way, she's on the same page. You can stop her being the presenter and help out this lost soul here if you want to call them out. And again, show their name, Christina, she's being bad. She might be sleeping in the back of the room. I don't know what her deal is. So click on her. You can make her the presenter. And you can talk her through the same thing over again. One other thing before I end this video is I wanted to show you that there's an auto refresh, which is up here. And I always keep mine set as 15 seconds because Quite frankly, everything else is really, really long. So I keep everything 15 seconds, and what that does is it just automatically refreshes what you're seeing on the student's screen. So if Christina changes something, you can see that she has typed in something weird, and you'll find this out in 15 seconds. Oh, look at her, she's being so naughty right now. Or if you want to update it manually, you can. So you might think, okay, Rob is doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. If you hit refresh, you can see this green key up here. This is an automatic refresh. You can just keep seeing what the students are doing. If I click it again, Sue got lost. She went back to her screen. So these are all the features that I use in the Capture Class page.